everyone. I am Reverend Gatlin Arthur Chance. My husband, Minister John Chance, and I are the pastors of the Holistic Transformation Ministries at Louisdor Land Settlement in Tobago. The Holistic Transformation Ministries is a Pentecostal church which operates under the umbrella of the Pentecostal Assemblies of the West Indies. I have been involved in education as a mainstream teacher and special education teacher for 35 years of my life. This program, Bridging the Gap, will be aired on the Tobago Inspirational Network every Saturday at 8 p.m. The program is expected to keep you at the edge of your seat. Join us as we apply the Word of God to deal with issues relating to early childhood and adolescence. Bridging the Gap right here on TIN. Merry Christmas and a wonderful New Year. Season's greetings to you, wonderful viewers of the program Bridging the Gap. I must take this opportunity to say thanks. Thank you for being there with me on every program and even those who are seeing it for the first time. I say thank you. It's always a pleasure for me to spend this time with you. Uh, it's Christmas and it's a time of sharing and loving and we know we should do that all during the year but there is something special about the Christmas season. Even the very environment, the weather, you know, it feels different and I thank God for it and we thank God for life in this season. Amen. Despite the fact that the COVID pandemic is upon us, we still give God thanks and praise and we would have enjoyed us a uh, Christmas, you know. We still have our black cake and our our sponge cake and pastel and all the things that we enjoy for Christmas. In fact, we were able to drop off some things for, uh, we usually we would spend the time together, but in this time we have to uh, social distance or rather personal distance, you know. So we would, uh, physical distance that is, uh, we dropped off things and we collected things without having to spend too much time because we do not want the spread of the virus. So I pray that God will bless us as we undertake this time with you. Uh, today with me I have my beautiful granddaughter. And what's your name? Tell them your name. Talila Rafit. And how old? How old are you? Seven years old. Very well, and uh, to my right is uh, the man that God gave me, and I know he will introduce himself. John Chance. I am John Chance, and it's good to be here. <laughs> He's pretending to be a man of little words. At this time, I, we just want to share, you know, we just want to talk about Christmas and, you know, what we understand and how we view Christmas. But before we do that, you know, we don't have the, our voices are musical instruments. Amen. So I just want us to sing that song and I will carry this song. Oh, uh, that song I want, or oh, go tell it on the mountain. We are happy that Jesus Christ was born. Are you happy that Jesus Christ was born? Yes. Why are you happy that Jesus Christ was born? Because he does have to help us learn. Okay. How e what else does Jesus Christ do for you? Help us learn, help us to grow up, help us to eat vegetables, help us to Help us to grow up and be some nurse, some doctor, some fireman, and lots of stuff. Okay. And what about if your head hurt in you or something? Uh, does Jesus play any part there? If you have a little pain or you're not feeling well, how, would, how could Jesus help us? He does help us by carrying us to the doctor. <laughs> Can he heal us? Yes. Yes. How do you know that he can heal you? Because he can. 
Alright. And what do we do to guarantee that God will heal us when we're not feeling well? You remember anything that granny or papa does when you're not feeling well and you come and you say, Granny, do what for me? Right. What about pray? Tell us about that. Praying is for what? That when you're healing stuff, like hands, like your foot and everything. And you pray, like for hands, for your head, for your foot, and lots of stuff. Okay, and I know you. she said pray for hand because she has a problem with her hands. And she would always say, Granny, pray for this hand for me. So we even the little ones understand the benefits of the birth of Jesus Christ. Amen. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountains that Jesus Christ is born. While shepherds kept their watching, O silent flocks by night. Behold, throughout the heavens there shone a holy light. Go, tell it on the mountains, over the hills and everywhere. Go, tell it on the mountains that Jesus Christ is born. And that's what we want to do in 2022. Go tell it on the mountains, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Hallelujah. In this season, brethren, and in the season to come, and I, I, uh, family and friends, in, I, might I say, we need to spread that Jesus Christ was born. And uh, not only that he was born, but that he died. And he did not stay dead. Hallelujah. He is alive, and he's going to come again. Amen. So we celebrate his birth, but we have it has moved to another level where he's going to come again. Amen. So we give God praise and we give him glory. We give him all the honor. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. And today we just want to talk. We want to talk about Christmas and what Christmas means to us. Because for different persons, Christmas means different things. And I will engage my husband now as I ask him, sweetheart, what does Christmas mean for you? At this point in my life, Christmas makes me reflect on what Jesus Christ did for us. You know, it's a nice time. It's a happy time. You know, it's a time of the year that I really enjoy because I love uh, the spirit of Christmas. You know, the, the sharing, the giving, you know, that relaxation, the time where, you, you know, you, you clean up the, the whole in area around you. You know, I mean, everything is spick and span. Everything is... Uh, you go and you trim the trees and you light up whatever. You know, it's just a time, a merry, merry time. You know, but um, I love reflecting on Jesus. You know, because it means so much to me what Jesus Christ has done. And so, I mean, Christmas, uh, it's not like the 25th of, of, of December, you know, Jesus Christ was born. But it's just a season. Um. Jesus brought love into this world. Amen. And so it's a time where you give and you share. And it's just a happy time. Amen. So, so that, that love that is being shared and amongst co-workers, amongst family, family get together. It's just a merry time. And so Christmas for me really is all about the love sharing the love of Jesus. And there you have it. 
and we are bridging the gap, so we want to hear what Christmas means to a child. What does Christmas mean to you? Christmas, Christmas means to me that I love Christmas because I love to get lots of gifts to play with every Saturday. Christmas is every Saturday? No. Christmas is the 25th of December. Right. So sometimes it's on Saturdays and, and next day it will be on another day, Sunday. Right? So uh, you said that you love Christmas because you get a lot of gifts. What gifts did you get last year? I got a Barbie camper, a playhouse, a Lego house, like, like a bike for my Christmas, a car, a dolly, like, like a dolly, a car, a bike, and, and a bed, and I think um, uh, she was talking about what she got for several Christmases. Not so? All right. And what do you want for Christmas this year? Tell Granny what you want for Christmas this year. What would you like to go and unwrap under the tree? I would like to go and unwrap under the tree. A gift, like a bigger gift, like a bigger gift was big for me. What, what must be in like the paper? What must be in the box? Like a dolly and like a car for it and like a dolly clothes. Okay, so you would like to have a dolly again and some dolly clothes for Christmas? All right. I hope your mommy is hearing that, right? Right? So, um, I, you know, for me, Christmas is a happy time. As I said when we started, there is something about the atmosphere at Christmas that is different from other times. And sometimes I think that it could be a bit psychological because there there are hams in the um, supermarket all during the year, but many of us we prefer to do it at Christmas, the turkey and whatnot. We prefer to do it at Christmas, you know. The I remember one time I I went to a doctor and I wasn't feeling too well, and she said, you know, people in Tobago they work too hard during the year. They change their curtains for Easter. They change their curtains for the August. They change their curtains for harvest. They just do too much. And she said, where, where I am from, we use lovely drapes and we do them like once per year or, or sometimes they last for more than a year. <laughs> You know, and it reminds me of Christmas and the amount of work I remember as a young girl in our home in Louisville. The entire house would be disrupted for Christmas. And Christmas Eve, you will work late into the morning, putting things back together, changing your curtains. Eh? Uh, John, you remember that? Oh yes, <laughs> you know, as as a young guy, you know, you you you, you recognize that, um, you know, mommy would turn that house upside down, you know, um, take down the curtains and 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 clean and the chairs uh, outside and and some turn down and the whole house would be in disarray, you know, and um, there's an excitement of putting back that together on Christmas night, you know. Uh, along that time when you're smelling the ham, uh, bacon, you know, and um, the turkey, and 
and, and the bread, uh, the bread is baking in the oven, there's a certain type of fragrance yes. that, that, that goes through the, the, the house. Yes. You know, and um, then when I was a little boy, I used to hear my grandmother talking about um, boiling the ham in the pitch oil tin. <laughs> you know, there was a, a certain type of tin that um, a biscuit tin that you put on the fireside, boiling the ham, you know, and, and, and that, that used to be fun because you all around there playing, and, you know, during that, that evening coming into night, and then when you go home, you know, it's you, you. And then they used to tell you things like, um, Santa, come in tonight, eh? Santa, <laughs> make sure and put up your socks. So sometimes you're looking for, a, a, you know, a big socks. Because you don't know what Santa would bring, so you're looking for daddy socks. You know, and you're looking for a socks that has some elasticity. You know, that, um, you know and they say, hang it, over, hang it up over the door. So when Santa come in, he would see it. You know, I mean, don't hide the socks and the next thing Santa can't see it. You know, and there was fun long ago because you had this feeling that there really was a Santa. It's not until... You know, I got big that I recognized who Santa really was. But for, for years growing up as a small guy, we had this tradition home of Santa Claus coming in the night. So you, you act, one time you're actually saying, well, I setting up to see if I go see Santa coming in tonight. But you, <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know that Santa looking to see when you're sleeping. You know? And, and there was so much fun because... Um, as a young boy, um, I like busting bamboo, you know, and we used to have fun sometimes. Some guys, the, the, the fire would, would burn their eyelashes or, you know, it was a dangerous thing. But, but we, we, on the day, we going to look for the biggest bamboo in the, in the bamboo root, bamboo stool, you know, and you make your bamboo to bust Christmas Eve night, you know, with your bully fay. You know, and for those who doesn't know, the bolife is a, a bottle where you put a wick into the bottle with, with, with a kerosene, and so, you know, that would light. So every time you blow the bamboo, you chuck that in the bamboo, and, it, you know, it would bust loud songs, and um, it would be like a competition, you know. And um, where I'm from in the country, there was like two hills, and then there was a level area. So the guys down in the level... Bussing bamboo and the guys on the hills bussing bamboo and then we'll have that talk as to who sung the loudest. You know, and, and it was really a lot of fun, you know, and um, even the days leading up, uh, you know, you have the animals with lost their lives, you know. Um, you always used to have a, a pig to be killed, slaughtered, and, you know, who have cows and you're going over to the neighbor and, you know, you're... you're, you're Father would say, um, can you just give the neighbor for me, please? You know? So the neighbor would, would, would um, you have a little piece of pork in a plastic bag carrying for the neighbor. And then when you, when you go over by the neighbor, just now, wait, wait, just now. Um, drop this for them for me. And they're going back home with a yam in a bag mm. and some dashin. You know, and all this used to be fun. Yes, yeah. <laughs> all this used to be fun yeah. because there was that sharing you know, and I, I remember specifically at one time, I said, you know, Christmas lose its taste. When I recognized that everybody reached a certain stage in life that you could now go to the grocery and buy just what you want and nobody doesn't have to come by you because you have your own ham and your lamb and your jam and you have everything for yourself and nobody yeah. doesn't come, have to come by you. Yeah. But long ago, it wasn't so. Because if you have a pig to kill, there is somebody else that have a cow to kill. And then it have those who have goat. You know, and there was always this sharing within the village of who are planting and, you know, when you carry something, somebody give you something. And I think I remember growing in the country that was really significant about Christmas, that, that, that sharing. Well, don't talk about Christmas Eve night with, 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 with the paranging and so on. Okay? Take it away. Well, I was waiting because <laughs> I, you, you, your, your Christmas was so, you know, 
And uh, we didn't, as, as girls, the bamboo bursting and thing, we were not a part of that. And up to today, for me, that is noise. It's fun for boys, but it's noise for some girls. And um, I just want to bring in Kalila here a little bit. Uh, Papa spoke about uh, Santa Claus. What, what, what are your views concerning Santa Claus? You really believe Santa Claus brings toys for you? Who brings the toys for you? Tell me what you think about that. I think about Santa Claus that he does wrap presents, buy presents, and put it under a tree in a bag. So you believe that the dollhouse that you got last year for Christmas and the bike that you got is Santa Claus that brought it for you? I think it's Santa Claus or one of the elves on them. <laughs> <laughs> so mommy didn't buy anything for you, nor did grand granny buy anything for you? I could say that with granny and my mommy, they buy a lot of things for me yesterday from Christmas, and it was fun for me to play with. Yesterday in church, we had we, we gave gifts to the children, so that's what you are referring to. I don't believe that it's Santa Claus. I think it's just a myth. It's just a story that Santa Claus brings these things, but it's really mommy who wraps them and put them under the tree and granny and papa that put them under the tree. I believe so. Uh, uh, so I, uh, as as um as she spoke about s as he spoke about Santa Claus, I remember as a young girl at home. Well, I grew up in the country in Louisville, and it was really different from now. Uh, there was a lot more sharing, more like bartering, as uh, John spoke a while ago about um you know the neighbor will have a pig. And another neighbor will have sheep or goat or, and they would share. You have this and you bring this for me and I have this and I carry that for you, you know. It was more of a sharing in those days. And uh, it, it was quite similar in Louisville. He's from Palatove. I'm from Louisville. You know, on Christmas you will remember the scent of the paint. Because every Christmas the house had to be painted, if not the entire house, some part of the house. Even if it was the gate, it had to be painted, you know. And the yard in those days, we didn't have the yards as we have them today, well paved and whatnot. It was the dirt yard and you had to sweep the yard. And another thing that um, if we were to look at Christmas long ago, uh, my husband spoke about some. Some of the things that I remember quite clearly is that my father had built a dirt oven. And I remember in those days, my mommy put in the ham, boiling the ham, yes, in the pitch oil tin, you know, on the fireside. And then she would put the ham in the oven. And she would also make bread, dirt oven bread. I wonder if you viewers have ever eaten as dirt oven bread. For me, it's the sweetest bread that there is. Something about the dirt and the bread and she would also do pone and um and 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 we didn't know much about pastel in those days i don't know perhaps in other areas but where i was from we didn't know much about that we would have sweet bread and pone and ginger beer and sorrel and all of it was done at home we did not know in those days as much as today about buying bread and ordering your black cake our parents would be there with their the big, we used to call them wash pans, and they would, mommy and, and, and the bigger ones will mix the cake, and the younger ones will wait until the cake was put into the pans, and you had to lick the pan. You had to use your finger and, 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 and take out what, was, what remained in the pan, and that thing tasted so good. And we didn't even study that it was egg and whatnot, but it tasted good. You know, and those were some of the experiences that we had of long ago. Another thing, uh, Kalila spoke about a number of gifts that you would buy and whatnot. We did not know much about that. 
Our parents did not spend that amount of money it, during Christmas time. In fact, they did not have it to spend. I remember one time, I'm the last child, so my, my mother asked my brother to go to Roxborough at that time. I don't know if anybody knows about that shop, Kaiser. You know, in rocks, where she said, Go and buy a dolly for your baby, your, your little sister. And that was Christmas Eve. It's it not like today when people will have all these parties and people will be giving gifts and gifts. <laughs> we didn't know anything about that, you know. And we enjoyed those times, you know. And my brother came, I remember my brother came and he came with a uh, he, he came with the gift and I, I ran to get it because I expected it to be a, a, a doll. And when he opened the gift, it was a Santa Claus with white flowing beard. And I remember as a little girl running for my life because I was afraid of it. And my mother was so angry, she was asking him, why you buy that for? I tell you buy a dolly for she. <laughs> he brought a Santa Claus and I was afraid afraid of this thing with the long flowing beard but you know and I rem wh what about the ham in those days the ham was very salty it was different the taste was different you know and everything was done in the dirt oven you want to share something yeah um long ago used to have a lot of homemade hams mm -hmm. um where uh before christmas um, they would uh, kill, when they kill the, the, the pig, you would take the, 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 leg, the leg of the pig mm -hmm. and the shoulder mm -hmm. and they would inject it with salt, with, with salt and, and different stuff. So, mm -hmm. so that is to cure it. So, and then you used to smoke the ham oh over yes. the fireside. Oh, with bay leaf. With bay leaf. Yes. Right? <laughs> so, so what happened, we used to have a lot of local hams, mm -hmm. you know, instead of picnic and so on. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, and, and Blue Ribbon. Yes, they used yes. to have a lot of local hams also, you know. But um, one of the things that I remember, um, we had Christmas, our Christmas tree long ago. As a young boy, mom used to say, go in the bush and see if you find a, a good tree that resembles a Christmas tree. <laughs> 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 so you're going and look. For, for a nice greenish tree, you know? So you're cutting that like, like Christmas Eve day. So, you know, by the time it shrivels up, <laughs> Christmas <laughs> gone, you know? And, and then you doesn't have much gifts. So we get a lot of box and we, we wrap them with Christmas, um, Christmas paper. Christmas paper. We used to go and get the Christmas paper and the kite paper sometimes. And you wrap your gifts and you put them below there. But you know it's empty boxes that is there. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it used to look pretty. and you, 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 you know what I mean? You put yeah. all your little stuff and you hang up yeah. your little bows and so on on that tree. But sometime by New Year's, that is it. The tree gone. <laughs> <laughs> and we so won't... Just now, you, so, but you, here it is. The one or two gift that you might have got for Christmas is when you hang up your stocking... <laughs> Christmas Eve night. That is the gift you're getting. <laughs> you know, we didn't have any gift below the Christmas tree to take out and open and whatever. That was empty boxes there for, for <laughs> you know, for just for, for you to look at, you know. And, um, you know, Christmas long ago was really, really different mm -hmm. to now. Yeah. Go ahead. Another thing, um, growing up in Louisville, Christmas there was no separation in terms of uh, Christian affiliation. Whether you were Anglican, that's how it was in Louisville. That I, I believe it's still that way up to today. Whether you were Pentecostal, wh whatever you were, those boys will come around with their DJ boxes on some kind of cart or something. Not like today, you know, in cars and big DJs and whatnot. They put in their, their, their music on these carts and push them around. A set of boys will come. You're hearing them from way up the road coming down with the music and beating pan and beating spoon and bottle and whatnot. And they're going, they were going by every home. There was no differentiation, you know. 
whether you are a Christian and you fit or not, they come in in front of your yard and they or in front of your gallery or the house and they would sing and call you out, Bob up. That was my father, Bob up, Uncle Bob, Miss Lucia. And we would come out and it made us happy. There was a unity, a togetherness that we experienced at that time. And when they would come around singing their Christmas songs, and some of them would be drunk eh, because it's since, in the, since Christmas Eve night they started to drink. And all our parents will come out with, with ham and, uh, and, and, and cake and sweet bread, cut things, cut sorrel and ginger bear. And everybody would partake, and it was fun. We had fun fun at Christmas. Now, we wouldn't be able to do that today as in the, the, you know, the COVID season, but we really want to reflect on what it was then, you know, and what it is now. There was a unity among the people in the villages at Christmas. And the amount of money that is available now, it wasn't available then. And somehow, our parents didn't have to spend that amount of money because we, 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 we didn't buy apple, apple and those things, those red apples and things, those, you know, we were not accustomed to that. And I'm talking about us, eh? There may be other persons that would have been, you know, privy to that. But apple for us, we knew was only Christmas time you may see an apple, you know, and, um, and, grapes, and, and grapes. grapes. It's only Christmas time. Well, we didn't even know about pear. And all those other things, we would be it would be our Jamaican red plum and sour cherry and mango and oranges and our yards were filled with fruits. We ate healthy. It's not like today where they import so many of those things and you have to, you know, go buy them at Christmas. And the other thing is that our parents planted. So it wasn't like long ago where you have to go buy yam, cassava, everything, you know. My father and my mother, they worked big garden, you know, and they would reap the yam. I remember hearing daddy talking about Ibo yam, and do you, you remember those, the names yes, of those? Yellow yam. Yes. Ibo and yellow yam. You know, we would, and we would have a lot of food. All the vegetables and things were planted in the garden. You know, times have changed. Uh, the next thing that um, they used to have a lot was homemade wine. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody used to try their hand at some type of homemade wine, cashew. Or, uh, even, even there was a little flower, a little red flower, hibiscus wine, uh, uh, guava, and rice, and wine. rice wine, aloes wine. Aloes wine. You know, there was all type of homemade wine, but man... Some of them wine, when you touch them, you're in trouble. <laughs> like they have more alcohol than those days they have VAT 19 and Old Oak White. Yeah. Old Oak Red. Those were the, 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 the rum of those days. VAT 19 rum, Old Oak White, Old Oak Red, and, and those kind of uh, 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 drinks. Those guys that drink alcohol, those were the, the drinks in those times. You know? And... Um, what used to happen long ago, too, there were a lot of board houses. So the people with, with that has houses that were board, they had ways that they would, they, would, they would decorate these houses. Now, if you have a board house, I could tell you, you must paint some place in it red. <laughs> <laughs> because red signifies Christmas, you know? And then they used to go and they used to get wallpaper. And sometimes a whole part of the house that use wallpaper and stick the wallpaper with a pattern coming down to decorate the board. <laughs> you know? So when you're going to some of those board houses, these are the things you used to see. You know? And, uh, you know, you, the floor and the step must paint down in red or gray or green. So if Christmas come and you ain't paint down your step, nah, Christmas ain't passed by you. You must paint down this step and back step. Right? That was a must for Christmas. You know? And um, those were the decorations in those times. And, and um, you used to see the woman making flowers from 
uh, plastic, plastic paper, plastic uh, kite paper, and plastic and plastic, uh, plastic bags. You used to have flowers making oh, from yeah. plastic bags yeah. and kite yeah. paper, right? Yeah. Uh, along with some grass, some grass they used to use and spray paint the grass. Those are the things you're putting in your in your flower spot. You wasn't going by certain places and buy a bouquet for <laughs> how much hundred dollars. Yes. You know? Yeah. So so people had local ways of, of, of really um decorating their, their, their homes, you know. And it was nice. Yeah. Sometimes you're taking gravel uh by the sea and you you throw you sp spread the gravel in front of your yard, you know. <laughs> So, the, you know, all these ways was local ways of really decorating your home, you know. And we had fun. And we had fun. And even as Kalila spoke a while ago about the toys and uh, things have become so expensive. At Christmas time, in those days, the neighborhood children would come together, kite flying was one of the, um, the sports at that time. And uh, what else? Marble pitching was around that time as well? Mar marble pitching. Yeah. Um, but uh, marble pitching was more, uh, I think Trinidad did marble pitching more at Christmas. Tobago did marble pitching more at Easter. Okay, time. okay. But, but, but some people did pitch. Yeah. You know, but really kite flying was yes, the, the real yes, thing yes. in Tobago and, and, around and Christmas. Some um, the, the, the climate at the time, the breeze would be yes, yes. Yeah, stronger Strong at that at time. Christmas. Even as a girl, you know, at home, because we had uh, one boy, then a girl, then we had a, a, a set of boys, because it's nine of us, you know. Then we had a girl, then we had some boys again, and then I came. So daddy would make kites. You know, and he would go with me and we would fly kite as a girl because the entire neighborhood would be engaged in that on Christmas morning. You know, everybody would go flying kite. Nobody was there with their expensive thousand and two thousand dollars thing and home with their on the fingers on the thing. Bing 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 bing. No. What about um top? Spinning of top. Was that the season for it? I think it was Easter also. Okay, right. Of right. Top. But um I, I think, and, and, and a lot of boys and some girls too, you know, they engage in actually making the kite. So they were very skillful. And the, the, the older ones, the, 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 the bridge was, uh, the gap was bridged with that because the older ones will, will, will link with the younger ones. And we, we, the younger ones would be so busy wanting to see, you know, bring the flower. And it wasn't like today with big yeah, time well glue and whatnot. Yes, it was flower. Long ago, long ago, we used to go and look for a cedar tree. And um, just before Christmas, you go with a cutlass. And you chop the tree, the, the bark of the tree. And the tree would spring a gum. Yes. Right? And then you, 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 you go back some days after when the gum dry and you, you choke off the gum with your knife. And then you take that now and you boil it. Mm -hmm. And that used to be gum, real nice like gum. Like glue. Like glue. Okay. To, 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 to thing your kite. To 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 um stick stick your kite yes and um some people too used to use flour yes you know make a paste with make the a flour paste with flour to stick the kite mm -hmm. but know? what material did they use to make the kites well in those days well it used to be fex you could have used fex uh -huh. or, or or used to strip um and make shingles okay Stri I think they use brown paper too and that yes kind of well thing. they used to you could have used plastic you could use they used to sell kite paper. You know, or, or brown paper, you know. And um, yes, that is what we make the kite. Right. So know? viewers, I don't know if you had these experiences. We had fun. We loved being together. Communities were together. The older heads were looking out for the younger ones. And we intermingled. We bridged the gap. We did not have the cell phone where somebody would um, stick in a corner on the phone and play a game by himself or herself. We played together. There was unity, you know. Uh, we visited uh, neighbors, 
you know you would visit the neighbors and you if your mommy didn't have uh sorrel you're getting it across by miss 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 vero or you're getting it by miss bernice or you're going somewhere and you're getting it cake what you didn't have they provided yeah. for I, you I, I i remember especially with kite my father would take us because we were three boys one girl so my father would take us and you know um he would put up the kite for us and when the kite go up in the air then he give you to hold yeah. you know so yeah. you, you would fly the kite and slack it and he would between us watching uh, you know pull the kite pull the kite you know rake the kite rake the kite you know so that's the way we learn it yeah. you know but he would actually go and put it out there and then give it to you you know so we um we we we, we that's the way but kite flying especially on on boxing day and christmas day that really was uh, uh, tremendous at this point um i want us to sing a song again because we in the it's christmas amen <laughs> And we just want to sing a song again. Oh, come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come ye, oh, come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him. Born the King of angels, oh come let us adore him, oh come let us adore him, oh come let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Sing choirs of angels, sing in exaltation, sing all ye citizens of heaven above. Glory to God, glory in the highest. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Yea, Lord, we greet thee, born this happy morning, Jesus, to thee be all glory given. Word of the Father, now in flesh appearing, O come, let us. Adore him. Oh, oh come, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, come let us adore him, Christ the Lord, for he alone is worthy. For he alone is worthy. For he alone is worthy. Christ the Lord, let's give him all the glory. Let's give him all the glory. Let's give him all the glory. Christ the Lord. Hallelujah. And despite, you know, what we're talking about Christmas, we want to maintain, you know, that uh, Jesus is the reason for the season. As my husband said, we may not be sure of the date on which he was born but we uh, celebrate Christmas to commemorate the birth of Jesus Christ and I want to some people would say you shouldn't have um, and this may be a bit controversial but this is just our opinion some may say it's a pagan festival so you have no right to do this you have no right what was your, what was your thought concerning that okay well 
The thing is, Jesus Christ was born. The important fact is that Jesus Christ was born. He came into the world. And so it's not really about the date. It's just a time that we set aside to commemorate the birth of Christ. So it has nothing to do with pagan. And th the fact is, if we celebrate the birth of Christ, knowing what Jesus Christ has done for us, we celebrate birthdays, we have fun, we bring gifts for birthdays. Right? We celebrate if we are victorious in some way. Right? And so Christmas is just a time that we acknowledge that Jesus Christ was born and we celebrate it. Mm -hmm. Right? So it, it has nothing to do. Some may say and some go way back in history to look at, at um, uh, Christmas and probably how it started and, and, and all this thing with Santa Claus and all that. But, but we as believers in Christ, we doesn't go into that. Mm -hmm. We just celebrate because Jesus Christ yes. was born. Yes. Because you have to recognize that pagans also celebrate Christmas. And there are people who didn't, that doesn't accept Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. They celebrate Christmas also. And the whole world celebrate Christmas, both whether you accept Jesus Christ or not. Mm -hmm. So people, act, people acknowledge Christmas in many different ways. Mm -hmm. But we as believers in Christ, we're not going into Santa Claus and, and, and Xmas and all these different things. We just yeah. celebrate yeah. because Jesus Christ was born. Mm -hmm. And um, another thing that I tell people is that uh, we don't engage in immorality we don't go drinking alcohol and fetting and dancing and getting drunk. And nothing is wrong with dancing, but you know what I mean, the type of lewd uh, behavior. And we Christmas for us is about the birth of Jesus, the one who came into the world through his, his, his father sent him to die for us. And we it's just a commemoration of the birth. And uh, our mind is not in the area as 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 people speak relating to paganism we pray we thank god for life we thank god you know for the birth of his son we appreciate the fact that jesus was born and we 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 we, we love we love all during the year but at christmas time you know there is something about it you know that it's a uh, a uh, uh, a bit more special in terms of giving and receiving of gifts and we demonstrate love and unity we 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 make sure that we are not like others that if christmas like is if christmas falls on a sunday you can't go to church in fact jesus is the reason for the season and i tell people all the time during that time some people don't want to go to church because they uh, feel well oh i have to stay home to clean the house and to but we have to remember that jesus is the reason for the season and despite what season we are in jesus takes priority serving god takes priority so we ought not to stay away from home during from from church during the season or from worshiping during the season because we are too busy doing other things we ought not to be too busy to serve god because the devil doesn't take time off and it's when we are busy and we put down our weapons and we don't pray and we don't study the word that the enemy will find a way to get in and work against us and we have to remember that as believers i don't see anything it's your choice whether you uh whether you celebrate it or not just make sure that you do it within a context you know, that you do not engage in immorality and wrongdoing and, and, and what they would refer to as paganism. You love people as you do throughout the year. You clean your house. And for me, I, it's an opportunity for me 
to get the, uh, the, the areas that you didn't touch during the year to get them done. Amen? So uh, you may not paint throughout the year. You paint at that time. You know, you make sure that you do certain things at that time. And the lights, I remember there's a friend of mine that would say, why do you put the lights? I say, because I like them. It has nothing to do with ungodliness. God knows our hearts and he knows what we mean when we do certain things. It has nothing to do with that. I do it within a, a context. I love how they look, you know. So that's just what it means to us, you know. There are some who say, okay, I'm not celebrating it and nothing is wrong with that. But don't tell me that because I'm celebrating it, I'm ungodly. God knows the heart. Amen. You know, we heard my little granddaughter talk about the time when she would have her gifts and she enjoys that, you know. And we try to let them know that Santa Claus has nothing to do with Christmas. We try to explain it, but some of them, no matter how you explain it, it takes a little more development for them to understand that, here, yeah, Santa Claus has nothing to do with this, as my husband was saying about putting up the socks and that kind of thing. After a time, you realize, oh, this is foolishness. It's mommy and daddy and auntie and uncle that put those gifts there. You know, so I just wanted to say, you know, our opinion concerning it. And yet still, we are not in disagreement with those who would say, I ain't celebrating no Christmas. Because some people think that uh, it's too, too much of a commercial kind of festival. People use the opportunity to, to um, sell and, you know, and people buy uh, without even thinking. People take loans <laughs> for Christmas, you know. But it's up to them. We have to understand how to spend and how far to go and to exercise control. It's a time when we need to exercise control and that kind of thing at that time, especially today. Uh, what, what do you think Christmas will be like during this uh, pandemic season? <laughs> when you think of Christmas and you think of the pandemic, what are some of the things that you know would come to your mind? Well, well I think... Um this Christmas would be one that is more geared to personal family. You know, because, I mean, you, you don't want to invite anyone and then you have to keep your mask on, you know. And, I mean, probably if you have a good friend and they, they may run in and to give them something, you know. Uh, there is something that they say, um, uh, leave it by the gate. There's a Christmas song that says, well, leave it by the gate. Something like that. <laughs> you know, you might have to reach them by the gate. You know, um, but it's not a time to really have any set of people, you know, by you say that you're having Christmas luncheon and this kind of mm -hmm. thing. It is so serious at this point, mm -hmm. you know. So Christmas in a pandemic, it has to be kept between personal family. That mm -hmm. is how I, I, I yeah. see it. Um, it's sad, though, that we're in this season at this time because Christmas is about visiting and sharing, and but we need to understand, and persons must understand that we are in a pandemic, and, and, and it's a real situation, and we ought not to hide and, and break the law. We have intricate brains, and we need to understand that there are times when we have to exercise control for our safety, not only for our safety, but for the safety of others. You know, usually uh, in our family on Christmas Day, we wouldn't have to cook. My sister would cook for everybody. She died and her daughter took over the role, so we would all end up at my niece's house on Christmas Day for lunch. And then on Boxing Day would be our day. Everybody will come by us. And we will cook up a storm and everybody will come and have a wonderful time. We play games and have fun. And then for New Year's, I will, we would go by our another niece. Everybody would go there and we usually have a wonderful time. But we have come to the understanding that 
even within families because recently mother and children and have died and we understand the seriousness of the uh the this spread of this COVID-19 so we have already decided that we cannot do that we have to within our own house we have to find ways and means of having fun and then we have the social media we could have dinners online you know we could have uh, Zoom or, or, or however we, we could cook and whatnot. And as my husband said, leave it by the gate. We could drop off things, you know. We have to understand how serious it is and don't try to break the law. Yes, we have a desire to be together, but at this time we cannot be together. And this is just a season. Every time I talk about the pandemic, I talk about a season. You know, and we pray and, and and hope that you know things will come under control. You know that there will be some means of control. Yes, the pandemic may be with us for a while, but we still think that there will be some bit of you know uh, a, a possibility of us navigating through this season so that we would still have fun and we we can't lose it all. You know and lose hope. We have to stand on the word of God. He's able to keep that which is committed to him. And even as we come to a close, you know, we need to understand that the word of God does not change. He's God, the same God yesterday, <coughs> excuse me, today, and forever he will continue to be the same God. So as we close, we declare blessings upon you, upon your family. We declare healing and the healing virtues of God in your life. Have fun. Be happy. Do not allow fear to take you over. Fear is a spirit. The Lord has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So we have to make sure that mind control spirit does not take us over. We declare that we have the mind of Christ and we will live. We're declaring it to the end that we will live and we will not die. Amen. I want to say Merry Christmas. Yes. To He's everyone. Yeah, I like that tone. Say that again a little louder. <laughs> we just want to say Merry Christmas. Yes. To everyone. Yes, and as we and as we leave, there's a Spanish song that says, Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. Prospero año felicidad. We want to wish you a Merry Christmas. We want to wish you a Merry Christmas. We want to wish you a Merry Christmas from the bottom of my heart. We want to wish you a Merry Christmas. We want to wish you a Merry Christmas. We want to wish you a Merry Christmas from the bottom. Of, of my heart.